All right, welcome back to Meteorology 101. In this video, I'm going to pull some historical data for some radar shots. We're going to check out some his history, uh, storms, tornadoes. If you have any ideas, put them in the comments for uh, dates, any significant storms that went through your area, like uh, any tornadoes. Just give me a kind of give me a specific location. Um, we can pull up the local radar. I can pull the history. I'll have to take a I'll have to download some of that data, so it takes a minute, but we can watch some of these loops and uh, see how the storm developed. We can do cross sections on these loops and uh, see what uh, how intense these tornadoes got. So right here is a storm, I believe from 2017, went through uh, Missouri, just an isolated cell. Uh, maybe wasn't even any warnings on this. Let me pull up the warning. See if they come up on the screen and then that'll tell us if there were any tornadoes or anything like that. So it looks like this pretty much dies out. Looks like uh, I didn't get enough data. We could This thing could develop into something, but I do have the data downloaded. I, let me go pull that open real quick. and uh, Sometimes that takes a minute to load, so let me go... Get that started. Alright, so we are loading right now. And this is data from 2017. I think it's February 28th. All right, we're almost there. Okay, so I see storms to the southwest, north, uh, east, Arkansas. Let's play the loop. We'll watch how this develops, and then we can do, uh, if anything significant pops up, we can do a cross-section or a uh, 3D volume scan and get a look at these storms. So we did have a severe thunderstorm warning through Walnut Ridge. Pretty much where it ends about Pigot, so let's go ahead and pull this storm right here. Let's get the most intense uh, area, and then we can do a cross section on that. So let me back that up. We were severe in this at this time, so let's do a cross section on that. Now you can see the tilt of the storm. 50 dBZs up to 20,000 feet, 60 dBZs up to about 12,000. Twist this around, get the most intense part of that. Right there. So that was a pretty significant storm. Definitely a severe weather. Nothing, uh, doesn't look like a tornado. If we want to see the structure of this thing, we can pull the, uh, 3d scan now we can go the different levels of reflectivity all the way down to 
the highest parts of the reflectivity and then see that structure of that storm so that was a pretty intense storm for what it was 50 dbz is at 20 over 20,000 feet right there's the red that's 50 dbz the reflective uh data on the radar and it did have a pretty significant tilt and then we can go all the way to 60 there's the purple so that was those higher reflectivities like that are mostly hail and if you get a tornado you can actually get some debris that was kind of scattered around you'll see the debris ball but that wasn't the case here this is just a uh, severe thunderstorm so did uh drop some hail that's for sure let's go uh so we're showing 1.07 inch hail based on radar that's what that triangle is and then pull that 3d back up now we can do a uh, base velocity and then look at our winds in the upper levels and see the structure of those winds and then we can change the intensity of that also so we had pretty significant winds at 30,000 feet which probably maybe had a jet stream dropping all the way down to 10,000 and then the red is just the uh it's not necessarily a stronger wind it's just a uh wind in the opposite direction of the green so the green represents uh winds going in toward the radar red represents winds going away from the radar so you can have rotation you can see your rotation or anything like that but like i said this was just a severe storm so it wasn't wasn't a tornado so we didn't see any major rotation right there we can pull up rotation with this program too let me do one more time on this uh volume scan on this one we can pull up to about 50 45 to 50 dbz and then uh show the rotation now we did have a little bit of rotation in the upper levels so you always have rotation in a storm not always but um you start getting rotation in a storm in the upper levels you, if it comes to the surface then you can see the uh funnel cloud or the vortex forming on a uh for a supercell for a tornado but in this case this like we said before this was a severe storm never was rated there was never a tornado never no tornado on the ground uh, 2017 was the date let's go uh load another one i'm gonna play that loop i'll get the uh data opened I have one from June 12th, 2017. And this was over, I believe in Kansas. Let this thing load. Wyoming maybe it was Cheyenne Wyoming is where this one was this is the location of the radars in Cheyenne not necessarily the storm so what that radar is what picked up the uh, signature for the for the storm let's go let's once this loads we can get start playing the loop and see what we got here takes a minute to load these frames this is a lot of data so it does take a minute to get all this loaded
All right, almost there. All right, let's play this loop. Looks like we're going to have a severe uh, thunderstorm south of Wheatland. One down here south of south uh, west of Cheyenne. Looks like it does move over pretty close to that radar. So if we break that storm down, we're not going to get a lot of data being that close to the radar. The radar will overshoot the storm or undershoot the storm. So let me get rid of that. We go trying to drag the screen. All right, a couple tornado warnings. Like severe west of Eaton, north of Windsor, Windsor, and then uh, definitely had a tornado warning over none, and then close to Wellington. So let's uh, stop this loop. There's one next to uh, just west of none. It looks like that has a pretty good little hook on it. We can pull that one up, but this one also just uh, over Pierce, we can see a little bit of a hook developing on that if we see that go it went tornado to a tornado warning and that was east of none with one inch 1.7 inch hail we had a uh, 0.83 inches just over three quarter inch hail in the north another severe uh, storm up here by Cheyenne and that one gets a little scattered because of that radar. You can see how that radar cuts through that storm. It doesn't depict this very well. We'd have to go download data from another radar that's local to pick that up. We get another tornado warning to the north, just northwest of Wheatland, northeast of Wheatland. Like I said, this was June 2017. Severe storm north of Douglas. Severe storm just uh, west of Esterbrook and we've got a few storms here so let's we start getting the best uh, start from the beginning we'll get the best reflectivity of each storm and then we'll start breaking those down so we got pretty strong right there west of Wellington looks like some pretty significant re reflectivities there nothing they didn't even have a severe warning at this time Went severe to the southeast of that. And then they finally went severe when this thing goes uh, just east of, or west of Buckeye. So we're um, starting to pick up pretty good there. Now we got a little bit of a shape to this one. We're going up to uh, about 65 dBZ. I see some white in there. And then... Push it on through, maintaining its status as severe, a severe thunderstorm. Never went tornadic on that one. Now these over here, just east of Wellington, those went tornadic. So let's break this, th this severe thunderstorm down first. Let's see what our highest reflectivities are. We know we've seen that white in there. Let's see the speck of white right there, so... And we have a little bit of a hook there. All right, so let's do a cross section on that. Get a little bit longer. It's a pretty good storm. Um, high reflectivity is over 20,000 feet. That's a significant hail. I think we said that hail was uh, about 1.8 inches maybe. I don't think it may be letting on this storm. Let's go right there. We got a three. We got three inch hail. So that, like I said, that still maintains a, a severe thunderstorm. Didn't go tornadic till it went to the north, but I'm kind of uh, questioning that. We'd have to pull up a uh, base velocity. I see rotation right there three inch hail I would say that should have been a uh, tornado warning but uh, they leave that to the professionals let's go uh yeah pick that off there let's go back to our cross section now the storm is 
pretty vertical. Typically, you want to see that tilt for your updraft because you're once that thing tilts, then you can get a downdraft, and then you can start creating that vortex. So that's probably why this never went tornadic. It never shot over enough to for that hail and the rain to drop hard enough to create the downdraft that was needed. But that's a pretty significant storm. You're shooting on 60 dBZ almost to 30,000 feet. That was a pretty severe storm. That's why, that's why you got the 3 inch hail. Because the updraft was so strong that it's holding that hail up above the freezing level for that long. Those hail stones, they collide with water droplets and uh, actually start to grow. They, they get too heavy. Then they drop below the freezing level, collide with more water, get pushed back up above the freezing level. They freeze again. And then that's why your layers of your uh, hailstones, you can, if you actually cut one in half, you can see the different layers as it grew as each water droplet soaked that hailstone and then the updraft pushed it back above the freezing level and uh, allowed that next layer to freeze so trying to drag the screen let me get a uh, let's do one 3d shot on this thing let's look at uh the structure where that hail was let me get a little bit bigger than that All right, now we can, we're up to, this is about 45 dBZ. We'll drag this to 50. That's our significant uh, reflectivity for severe weather. And we actually can go all the way up to 60, and that'll show the structure of the storm toward the center of it. So this thing was pumping hail To get that high reflectivity and that volume, I mean, this thing was pushing pretty hard for. I had a hell of a uh, updraft. You can actually move this, I think, to watch that structure dissipate as it goes. So we can watch it, this thing build. Spin this around. All right, we're going backwards right now. So we're going from the southwest to the northeast. We spin it back around. We can get a better look at that. And this is just a 60 dBZ. This isn't even... We had a heck of a lot more reflectivity on this thing. We were shooting all the way up to almost 30,000 feet with that hail. Those high reflectivities. That's mostly hail in that storm. That's why we got that. That was a pretty strong updraft. That's why we got three inch hail out of this thing. It was definitely severe. But it was uh, pretty much vertical. So that's why it never went to a tornado. All right, we can bring us down to 50 dBZ. We can actually we can go see this the whole structure of this storm. So 40s in the 30 dBZ range, 20, and then we can look at the upper levels for 5 to 10 dBZ, and we can watch. If you look at the top of this thing, you can see the overshooting tops. So our updraft was reaching all the way up to 40,000 feet, shooting over the triple pause, which our triple pause is usually between 30 and 40,000 feet. And the updraft was so strong it was shooting up over 40,000 feet on this storm. So with the updraft that strong, we, that's why we were holding that hail up for that long to, to grow up to the 3 inch range. See right here's where that's not a it's a bright reflectivity, but it's uh with yellow you're in the forties. You want to be in the fifties for severe weather, but we're forty dBZ is over thirty thousand feet, and then we can see the structure of this thing. It looks like it had a little bit of tilt to it. 
Let's go look at the base velocity and see if we can see any how much rotation was in this thing. So it looks like mostly in the upper levels. So we can see the red going away from the radar, the green's going toward the radar, and we were actually picking up in the rotation in the upper levels. We can pull up the rotation. So that's showing rotation pretty much throughout that storm. All the way up. So I'm kind of uh, surprised they didn't put a tornado warning on that one. And this base velocity, let's go look at the different levels of that too. We can get into those mid levels. Mostly updraft. You can just see that updraft on this storm. And it's mostly vertical. And that's pretty much where it ends. So we got up above 10,000 feet. This thing was elevated. Probably did have a Definitely had rotation in the upper levels. Nothing just nothing came to the ground. All right, let's go back. Get to the fifty dBZ. That's the significance of your severe weather, and then. Then the 60 dBZ or higher on the reflectivity is uh, the significance for hail. Like I said, this thing was intense. That's why this thing produced 3-inch hail. Let's go back to that loop. I'm surprised this one it may have went tornadic uh, later. Let's play that out. Stayed severe all the way west of Cheyenne. And that was pretty much it. That's where our loop ended. We could download more data, but I think the significance of this thing was here. Now, we did have these tornadoes to the southwest, southeast. Let's go look at this. There's one right there. Two cells. They both ended up going tornadic. We can watch this first one. I want to do a cross section on that. Right across that hook. Now we can start seeing. Let's drag this thing around. We can get our most intense areas. So we can see that tilt on this one. And then the overhang. So you had the downdraft. You had the updraft at an angle. Then you had the downdraft that gave you the rotation to create the vortex. We didn't have that on the severe storm. So that's just a cross section. Now let's do a uh, volume scan on that. I'm set on 60 dBZ so we don't see anything. So you don't have to have 60 dBZ, the high reflectivity, to be a tornado. 50 dBZ is your threshold. Now we go into 40. He said that other storm looked more intense, but this one had the this one had the tilt structure to it for the updraft. Go on down. Okay, we'll go all the way to uh, like five dBZ. That's then that just gives us our outer structure, the weakest part of the storm, and then we can see. How this was structured. We can see our updraft. We can see the overshooting tops. Then we could go to the higher reflectivities, and you can see how it goes, just drops right into the center of that storm.
now we can almost start seeing a structure here where a vortex was formed going to the surface right around that hook right there we had significant reflectivity all the way over 30,000 feet we didn't even go into the 60 so pull the structure back up like I said with the tilt of the storm now we have definitely some rotation let's go look at the rotation on this thing and you can see that rotation all the way through the upper levels so right there would be your vortex coming to the surface to a base velocity we can see the rotation on the on the surface you can see that red in there so let's get to those levels it's just going to fill up this screen rotation significant real significant rotation in the upper levels so we got anything in the other side here had to rotation pretty much in the upper levels and then closer to the surface so we can see that uh red and greens on the surface let me go pull the base velocity right there for rotation that was the indication of the for the uh tornado so it's had a tornado warning it was a northwestern weld county northeastern colorado this was like i said june of 2017 maybe 2015 i'm trying to find the date here we got 12 21 15 that is not it yeah june june 12th 2017 we're pulling history uh historic data here so none of this is real time all right so the source was radar indicated rotation that was the warning why this warning was set there wasn't necessarily a tornado on the ground We had one inch, 1.48 inches, almost an inch and a half of hail. All right, let's go look at this storm over here, southwest of Cheyenne. Do a cross section. We get a better look at that now we're going to get since this one's closer to the radar that's why you got this blank spot up here the radar is just overshooting this thing and not picking up uh it's just too close it won't we won't pick up those reflectivities in the upper levels it's basically undershooting all the upper levels because it's too close the storm is too close to the radar now i see 60 dbz's climbing up there to about ten thousand feet now we've got a line shooting up over, probably going to about 20,000. Vertical structure on this thing. Um, it looks pretty vertical until uh, right there we got some tilt. So now we can go do a volume scan, break this down. Like I said, it's going to be, all that top's going to be chopped off because the radar wasn't shooting up that high we can move the storm through that let's go uh now right now this is a severe the severe warning let me go to let's go see if this thing ended up being a tornado it ends right there our loop ends right there to ranchettes so this just remains severe up to that point at least and there's some one inch hail 
And let's do a volume scan on that one. Trying to get away, get a shot away from that radar so we can get a better look at this thing. But I think we're we're losing it right there. You can see that where it's chopped off from the radar beam. It's so close to the radar, it's shooting up, and then it's uh, it can't pick up any of the upper levels. So, all right, let's get a uh, one tiny area of uh, 60 dBZs that was pushed to almost 10,000 feet. Right, there we go. Alright, let's go back to 50. We get a better look at the structure. And this was just pretty much uh pretty much one just one big cell. I don't see any major indications of rotation. Like I said, we just lost we lost a lot of the upper levels because it's so close to the radar. You can see where the radar scan shot from the surface up. Basically shot from the surface just straight out more or less on the lower levels. And overshot that or undershot that upper level data. Alright, so Let's get two We covered that one as a pretty significant storm there. Let me see if we can find a tornado on the ground. So we got a pretty good hook right here. Three inch hail out of that storm. Let's go look at that one. Let's cross section across this uh, hook. Get a better shot of that. A pretty long. Cause I'm zoomed in pretty much, so I got to do a long shot to get a better structure on a cross section. So there's a. Uh, that probably was a tornado on the ground. 60 dBZ pushing all the way up, over 20,000 feet. 50, 50 dBZ up to 40,000. We had a little bit of tilt on the storm. You can see the overhang with the downdraft. And now, let's look at. There's right there's the strongest part of that structure. And we had the tilt. We looks like we got the vortex on the surface right there. So let me see if anything was reported. Look at the report on this one. Tornado warning remains in effect. Oh, that was a 415. No, that's a northwestern Weld County. Tennis ball size hail and radar indicated rotation. So we had definitely had the rotation. Both of these storms, two different cells, 3.14 inch hail. Now we can do a volume scan and see where we're at. So we can see the overshooting tops on this storm going up to about 50,000 feet. This is the lower reflectivities on the outline outline of the storm. So you can give you a picture of that cumulonimbus updraft all the way up, shooting over 50,000 feet. And then we can take our reflectivities up, fill in the center of this thing. Keep going. And then the, to the 30 dBZ to 40. Then 40 to 50. Once we hit 50 is where we can definitely see. That definitely looks like a tornado structure right there. There's our there's our wedge. Here's our downdraft. So that thing is pretty well structured. Let me get See if I can change some colors here to enhance that a little bit.
Uh, that's about the best I'm going to get right there. But that looks like a pretty well structured tornado. We got um, base velocity. You can see now. You can see you're seeing some of that vortex shoot to the ground. Rotation on this uh, velocity scan. Let's get. That's pretty much the end of it right there. That's the best we got right there. So you see that vortex reaching the ground right there through the center of that. Let's see if I can change this. Uh, A little hard to see. Alright, so you can see that vortex in there. Now, let's go, let's go with rotation. So we have rotation pretty much all through that storm. Alright, not what I wanted to do. I wanted to get Alright, that's a pretty good scan right there. So let's get up to the 60 dBZ mark. Let's see where we're at. We start bringing that down. I think I got that darkened a little bit too much now for that. There we go. Definitely see the structure on that one. Take it to 60 dBZ. Now we were shooting hail. Possibly some debris from this storm. We have a pretty good hook on there. Not really a debris ball though. I'd say most of this would probably be hail. Got the other hook back there. Throwing some hail up too, but we're pushing up to almost 40,000 feet with these reflectivities. So we were, that was a pretty strong updraft. Definitely had the rotation. That was, I would say, definitely a tornado on the ground. Alright, let's take that back down. Every once in a while you'll get 70 dBZ, but that's not likely. Some of the most intense storms, even with the with the debris ball, I haven't seen the 70 dBZ. It would be white. All right, so there's our structure right there. All right, if we look at this area to the right. We can go up in the upper levels. And now we can see that overhang to the east. Now our high reflectivities are pushing east as we go into the upper levels of the radar. What we're doing is just I'm taking the radar scans from the upper levels. We're coming back down now. So you can see there's where your most significant hail was that hail over three inches and this is a uh, different degree on the radar in the upper levels and if we did that volume scan you can see the 60 dbz range shooting, shooting all the way up to about 40,000 feet on this storm all right so This is June 12th, 2017.
All right, let's go pull another one. I don't have a lot of these downloaded, so like I said, if anybody's watching here, let's uh, you guys type in the chat room um, if you know a date. An approximate time of a tornado or significant storm you remember put it in the chat and I'll uh, I'll go download it real quick and then we'll pull that up and analyze it okay so I got a December 11th this is just recently the December 11th tornado we can pull that one up and then we can pull up a one over in Oklahoma in 1999 and that was an f5 so this tornado that went through on the 10th and the 11th just last weekend was uh that was rated an F4. We got a lot of data downloaded on this. So let me see what let's pull up a few of these. Let's see what we end up with. This is for Paducah, Kentucky, the radar of Paducah. I'm loading data now. This is going to be a little bit. Sometimes the program doesn't like to put a lot of data in there at once. So we'll take a little bit of time in the process. This uh, eventually should shoot over to Paducah, Kentucky, right there, southern Illinois. And then we'll just load each screen at a time right now. So we got, we got a little bit to go. This was that significant storm like I said just last week in that tornado that traveled through five states over 200 miles and um, just left a path of destruction Almost halfway there. Okay, what happened? I think it just jumped over to a different radar. I'm not sure if it did yet, but there's a... Paducah's radar went down because of the storm. And then I actually downloaded a loop for the second part of it from another radar. So it kind of shows it in a different position. Probably a little bit different time. So we'll have to see how that turns out with this loop. It may all, it may all be on the same timeline but about uh almost zero four z about 11 o'clock that night the paducah radar went down and then we had to use one another one from the east it was a little bit further out but it did pick up the storm fairly well Okay, here's our loop. Let's go ahead and play the loop. 
we got so you can see we have several tornado warnings in the in the whole area like 200 miles with one storm we had I forget how many tornado warnings set that night and then severe storms it was just insane with this line and nothing was stopping that pretty much stopping that storm that went through uh right here Mayfield so this is a pretty short loop actually but this is a storm that went through Mayfield if we zoom in we'll see the debris ball this was your textbook comma uh, hook hook echo and uh you can we can see we'll go see debris on this thing and it was uh pretty intense so Like I said, the radar went down. That's why it flashes. The storm moves. Let's go. Uh, let's go look at some of these other tornadoes real quick. They weren't as significant, but they did have some hook echoes on them. St. Louis got hit pretty good. Everybody's focused on Mayfield. Mayfield got hit the hardest, um, but pretty much. Uh, there's a lot of damage with this storm in other areas that aren't being broadcasted, so let's go. And I'm kind of moving around quite a bit. All right, let's get back to the beginning. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, these small storms, but let's go look at this one real quick. do a cross section right across that hook kind of get an idea where how intense this storm was we had 50 dbz's up to about 15,000 pushing 20,000 feet right there there's a 60 dbz dot pops up at the center of this had a little bit of tilt on it definitely probably has some rotation because of that tilt and then let's see if there was a uh, definitely a tornado warning on that one so let me go. Try to see if there was a report for a tornado. Tornado watch rains in effect till 2 a.m. Is uh, this is at the point where it was canceled. Do a 3D scan on that one. 50 dBZs, up to 15,000 feet or so. As I said, this one wasn't super intense, but it did uh, justify rotation on the on the for that warning. So here's a base velocity. Let's go to the lower levels with this. I don't see any green in there, but you do got some structure right there. Looks like maybe that's about where the vortex was, but I don't see anything on the surface just to indicate that rotation. I don't see the the green for the uh, rotation going in toward the radar. Let's get these reflectivities changed real quick. Like so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this storm. Overshooting tops up to thirty thousand. So like I said, it's a pretty strong storm, but um, definitely probably has some rotation. Justified the tornado warning. Had the tilt to the storm, but we just don't see a vortex on the ground. Definitely would have some rotation in the upper levels, but all right, let's go from elevated, uh, maybe an elevated tornado or funnel cloud. All right, let's get over to another storm. There's a tornado warning. I don't see anything there. Sometimes the radar doesn't pick it up. Let's go. Okay, I can't go back any further. Let's go forward. We're still popping up tornado warnings here. Let me get my uh, bearings here. Uh, here's Mayfield. So this is all pushed off to the northeast already. That's the main storm we're going to focus on, but I want to go pick up some of these other storms real quick, and we're just going to look at those.
like I said, they're not getting talked about a lot. So let's go see the structure of these things. Let me get to the most intense part. We had a one inch hail, it looks like, indicated by radar. A little bit of a hook on that one, nothing uh, serious. We do got we do got the bow. Definitely tornado warning after warning on that one, so. Do a cross section across the center of this stuff. I know that's blank. Let me get my I'm trying to find my adjustments here. I don't see anything. We're on the cross section. We're not we're not picking anything up on these. All right, let's do, probably you know, see nothing on a volume scan. Maybe I didn't get the upper level data. I just got the surface. So we got the base reflectivity. All right, so let's get out of there. Go back over here. This is the one. There's Mayfield. That's the one to the northeast. Let's go. All right, we jump to another radar. That's to the end. So Mayfield got another line went through after their tornado. Let's go back. And here's the one that we want to focus on. This is uh, south of Hickman right now. This is a storm that went through Mayfield. So this is before it made it there. And it looked like it had a pretty good hook on this thing anyway before that. And this is... Like I said, went through five states. We could even go back further. This thing just traveled. It's about 200 miles. So we got, we're showing 2.67 inch hail over two and a half inch hail. Indicated by radar on this shot. And this hasn't even made it to Mayfield yet. The reason people are focused on Mayfield, they got the worst of it. Once we get there, we'll look at the uh, debris ball. And that thing was pretty intense. So All right, let's see if we can get a cross section on this. Maybe got some data. Okay, here we go. 60 dbz is well over 30,000 feet. Pretty much the whole time, all the way through that storm, we got 60 dbz over 30,000 feet. So it's just a pretty intense uh, storm. We definitely look at the tilt on that one right there that tilt right there and then we got this cut off but that's our overhang and that's so we got or we got a real strong updraft on this one Let me get back out of that we can try to yeah cut it backwards here let's go a little bit longer all right there we go you can see we got the tilt 50 dbz is up to 40,000 feet 60 over 30,000 So we got the tilt we got everything we need to be a severe Weather right there. So now we can see that hook forming we got a uh, Let's go to the base velocity There's a rotation two inch hail gate to gate shear Right over the top of that area all right, so Let me get my let's do a volume scan on this. And this is before it hit Mayfield, so we still have a pretty strong structure there. Looks like when I see 60 dBZ on the surface, we're gonna have some pretty high reflectivities in the center of the storm. We just did the cross section, so we've seen it at 30,000 feet. Let's go change these readings first let's get a big picture of the storm right there your lower reflectivities aren't surrounding the whole storm because the updraft is so strong that most of your the center of the storm is well uh, too far intensified to have lower reflectivities it's it's just massive and uh it's a very strong storm but you can see your overshooting tops Looks like up over 50,000 feet on this one. All 
and then just bring it down to the center toward the center of the storm you still see the strongest part of that updraft hit 50 dbz and i mean this is 50 dbz is up to 40,000 feet over 40,000 feet And that's a lot of the volume of the storm. So, I mean, that's uh, most of the storms over 50 dBZ and pushing 40,000 feet. I mean, you're you're pushing up to 30 here, over well over 20. You can see the structure and the angle. You definitely got the rotation. Let's hit the rotation button. Let's see what happens. You can see it all the way through that storm. Base velocity. A big hole in the center. But we're on. I'm going to bring this down to different levels. There, now you can start seeing that vortex. line breaks off and you can see the rotation way up in the upper levels there but there's the vortex all the way back down this is more I'm going up to the levels of more intense uh, winds so here's our vortex right there alright so let's get Back to the reflectivity. Now we can pull. Go to the 60 dBZ. Like I said we had it. 40,000 feet. So we're. We're pulling some pretty heavy hail. Up in these levels. Now you can start to see your structure right there, the southwest quadrant. For high reflectivities coming to the surface, let's go back down. Looks like that vortex stretching down right in that area where that hook is, so. Let's get on over to a few. Let's get up to a few more screenshots here. I got my uh, warnings turned off. That's why we don't see tornado warnings. So. Definitely got a stronger hook here. Right around Hickman. They got hit pretty hard. Let's go look at. Uh, let's do a cross section on this one. And then we still got the 60, 60 dBZ all the way up to 40,000 feet. Looks pretty vertical. Um, does have that overhang. Looks like the downdraft on the other side. So this was still a tornado on the ground. That was confirmed all the way through this whole storm. And so that's the cross section there. Let's go to a volume scan. So we're showing uh, a warning of over 3 inch hail indicated by r radar right there near Hickman so we do this volume scan now we see the tilt we're still at 50 we're well over 50 dbz at this point here's 50 we just shot the, the high 40s once it goes red that's 50 and then we see our overshooting tops I mean you're pushing almost 50,000 feet that was a really intense storm. We had a that had a heck of an updraft on that. Let's go. Let's bring back down to the structure of this thing. So now we're pushing well over fifty thousand feet with the lower reflectivities. So our updraft overshooting tops pushing 
probably 55, almost 60,000 feet. So if we look at this thing from the east as it's coming in, now we can pull the reflectivities down, get the structure of this thing. Right there's the 50 dBZ mark. Now go to the 60. Once we hit the 60, even the right there in the red, the 50, the high 50s. Try to get that right on the line if I can. Between 50 and 60. Once I hit 59 to 60 dBZ, it's only one difference, but the color change just gives you the indication. There's the rotation, there's the storm. That's the structure of that vortex. See if I can change this. Uh, you got the better view on this thing. whole screen here so okay now we can see a little bit better all right so this is 60 dbz let's go higher and then it starts to dissipate so we were right at 60 dbz you gave us our structure of that storm and like i said this was a tornado confirmed on the ground this is the one over 200 miles they were still they're still assessing the damage of what this thing did went through a lot of uh, unpopulated areas so um, Mayfield was the biggest city I think it hit so that's why this thing was only rated in EF4 because they're going by damage the wind speeds um, we could probably pull up uh, wind speeds on this thing and see see the criteria for an EF5 but I guess they're just kind of sticking with the damage on the on the storm too rated an EF5, I only call it EF4. So, all right, let's go base velocity real quick. Now we can see all the winds in the upper levels toward the surface, and then we get more intense as we go into the center of this thing. So, we'll drop it down. Now you can see the size of that vortex. Need to brighten this up a little bit. Let's see if we can change these. Rid of these shadows. I'm not sure if I'm making it better or worse. Okay. Try a different setting. There we go. That ain't too hateful. Let's go uh, bring this velocity down to the center of the storm. Definitely see the tilt. I don't know why we're not showing the red. We see the red on the surface. We have, definitely have uh, rotation, significant rotation. Let's hit the uh, rotate button. See what we got for rotation here. Definitely got the structure of the uh, tornado right there. So all the rotation we need. Now let's get back to base velocity and base uh, reflectivity. Hit that 50 dBZ mark, that's where our magic number is for 
how significant this thing is and then start seeing the structure of that that tornado so now let's go a couple screens over we can move this thing and bring this tornado right through the 3d the 3d screen and you can see it dies out as it goes out but that's just losing reflectivity off of this off of this volume scan it's not losing intensity on the storm so let's go a few more screens up now we're starting to get that debris ball right there around Crutchfield and we can do a volume scan on that we'll go a little bit bigger alright so Right there, we're throwing debris over 30,000 feet where we have hail. We have a high reflectivity over 30,000 feet on this storm. That should be stretching down into the debris ball. Let's get, bring this back. We can watch it start forming to the debris ball. Now we've got our vortex. all the way down lower reflectivity is all the way to the upper levels and pretty much fill the screen up to 50 pushing 60,000 feet for overshooting tops so we had a heck of enough draft on this thing too all right let's do a cross section on that Right there is over 20,000 feet with 50 dBZ. And then we got our definitely got our tilt. There's our pushing 30,000 feet. You can definitely see the angle. So we got to get a uh, pretty long cross section to be able to see the get a good representation of this thing. Right there, 20,000. Right there's your over 30,000 feet high reflectivities. Definitely got the angle. Of this storm and we got the downdraft so we're pretty much there for a severe tornado at this point all right we got to, we'll go a few more um, I guess I need to adjust my cross section too I didn't uh, get that one stretched out for you all right there we go do another volume scan real quick let's see I think we already did the um, rotation on that one let's go out zoom out let's go out to let me get this thing stretched down here so we can go to there's our debris ball it's pretty intense right there north the crutch field let's go keeps going now it's just picked up that debris and it's just carrying it all the way to Mayfield Got, uh, you can see the intensification of that debris ball through Mayfield. So it picked up a lot more debris there and then shot on out. They were finding stuff uh, miles away from Mayfield. Alright, so there's a, as it went through Mayfield. Do a cross section on that one. And then. Right there, you can see up to areas of 30,000 feet right there with debris. And that's a pretty good tilt on this updraft. I mean, this was an intense tornado. Like I said, they're rating this thing an EF4 based on damage. So let's go to the surface real quick. Let's pull the, uh, pull the wind data. Good base velocity. Now we can see some pretty intense wind 74. Let's see what we got for. 
Yeah, minus 58, minus 52. There's 100 knot gate to gate shear. Let's go a few shots up from this. Go back. Let's see right here, what we got right here. Fifty-eight, fifty-eight, gate to gate shear right there. That's a hundred and twenty knot gate to gate shear. So I'm not seeing the intensity everybody's talking about for the winds. They say three hundred knot winds on on radar. Let's see what we got. I mean, we're getting pretty intense stuff here, but I mean the damage alone. We're still pushing the, uh, it's like 65, 67. Let me go back. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong number on this one. Let's go 40, 50s, 91. There's, that would put us almost 200. It's 180 knot gate to gate shear. Let's go back to so ninety seven and ninety seven hundred and seventeen. There's a two hundred and thirty four knot gate to gate shear. I think you just need a two hundred mile an hour to be a F5, I have to go look at the specs on that again, but we're pretty close. Get back to the reflectivity. All right, we shot through Mayfield. Let's get let's get the uh, highest point here, reflectivity, and do a volume scan on that. I'm gonna try to see the structure of this thing. So we're cutting off some of that. Let me go. Try to keep it in the middle of the screen here. We got. Uh, it look, doesn't look too bad. You can see that tornado right there. Let's get this thing pulled down. 50 dBZ. Right there, 60 dBZ. So you can definitely see that was an intense, an intense storm, and that was pushing debris all the way up to 30,000 feet. That's in the debris ball itself, right there. So that was carrying stuff miles away. Come to the 50. Start building up around that a little bit so it got, gets a little cluttered, but let's go to a little bit higher, the upper 50s on the reflectivity. Now we can see our storm there. On the back side of it. Alright, so that's pretty much the storm on Mayfield. That's pretty intense. Now let's go look at an EF5 tornado. We're going to go to Moore, Oklahoma in 1999. That's one of the largest storms on record. Let's go back and look at that one. Alright, so and not what I want to do there. Let's go. I'm trying to drag that screen over. Let's see where we end up. Let's play that loop. Go get a uh, some more data. All right, we got a lot of data saved on this one too, so I'm gonna have to let's see, try to determine these times. Let's go. 
zero five Z was that sixteen Z So 146, all right, let's go back. I think it was like 150 or something on the time. We're gonna open up quite a few of these. That's gonna jump over. Oklahoma, Oklahoma City's radar. Loaded pretty quick there. All right, let's go. I think more is right there, south of Oklahoma City. So there's that storm that went through. It was an F5. We just caught the end of it right there. So I don't see any warnings on my screen, but it's from uh, pretty old data. So all right, let's look at uh That debris ball right there north of Moore. Do a cross section on that one. I think we're pretty close to a radar too. I can see the angle shooting that one. There's the radar to the uh, east. Let's go. A 60 dBZ to 20,000 feet. Tides of radar beams letting us see. That radar beam does cut off the top of this tornado, but you can see the angle of this thing, and that is tornado on the ground. I mean, this thing is pretty intense right there. Now, do the 3D scan. Actually, let's go to the um, base velocity, see what we kind of stuff we got there. 80, that's 160 knot gate to gate shear. Definitely rotation. Real close to the radar though. So we lose some data. We'll do a volume scan on this one. We get kind of in that hook a little bit. All right, let's see what we can do with this. So we are, we're on the high 50s on the reflectivity. We'll go to the 60. You can see we're pushing 60 dBZs almost to 20,000 feet. Even that, uh, the Mayfield tornado was pushing 30,000 feet. So a little more stronger of an updraft or more, more debris. It was carried more debris further. Um, not to undermine this one, but let's go. You can see the vortex right here. Let's see what we have. Look at the structure of this thing. Trying to stay right there on that 50 line. Let's get a little bit, uh, trying to get a little bit of a smaller cross section, but that's way too small. Smaller, uh, volume scan. We'll get zoomed in on this thing pretty good. All right, now we can do another volume scan on this thing that we can just kind of put some outlines of the higher reflectivities, but let's do this first. Let's go to the base velocity. Man, I can't believe it. Okay, oh, actually, I'm, there we go. Gets a better, better structure bringing this down. All right, you can see pretty much rotation throughout this storm. 
all the way from the surface all the way up. So we couldn't see that in the other one. Like I said, we're closer to the radar, that's why we're getting this ripple where that radar is just missing the, the data, so. You have to get a bigger volume scan and look at this thing, but you can see the vortex on this. Right there in the southwest quadrant of that cell. And then... Let me see here, go... Look at this from the east. Then we can go put some shadows around this thing. So we see our high reflectivity is up to 20,000 feet. Like I said, the radar cuts the top of this thing off. So if we take 50 dBZ, we want to see all of that. There's every bit of 50. We got 60 in the middle. Okay, and then we can bring we cut off. Um, we'll cut off half of that, but, but let's go. Cut off some of the 50 and get into the 60s. Alright, now. Not really doing that justice. Let's go. Some lower 50s. Put some lower 50s in there. all of the 50 I'm trying to get a good adjustment for uh, 50 to 60 dBZ cut off half the 50 then we can go bring back some of the uh, 40s back into them 60s a little bit just trying to trying to build a structure of this thing a little bit better not doing a very good job Uh, this storm was from 1999, so don't want uh, anybody to get alarmed if they come across this channel and see a tornado. But like I said, we got this one got uh, radar got cut off. I don't know if there's any other radars in the area we can download. Try to get a good look at this thing. Pretty much INX. I don't know why I just did that. We just lost everything, so. And then we had FDR and BNX. So we might be able to overlap with one of these. I'll go download the data with that, but we'll do that later. Right now. That is pretty much it. 
for this video let me get back real quick i want to actually i want to pull up a uh, picture it's not gonna let me do that on this let me get to i did a 3d scan on that 99 tornado earlier let me go to Got a pretty good volume. I got a pretty good scan on this thing earlier, so let me uh, pull that picture up and then I'll show that to you. Right there it is. Now, that was a pretty intense, that was an F5 tornado. You can see the structure of that one. I can't rotate this screen or anything. It's uh, it's saved into the two-dimensional, so um, you can see those updrafts all the way over 30,000 feet. 50 dbz we had 60 dbz's up to 20,000 plus and then you can see your downdraft you got to rotate you got your debris ball and uh this thing's definitely uh was a pretty intense intense storm so i don't know how many people are watching here i was gonna hang out for a minute um let's go look at the current radar go through the current systems real quick that's uh in the area and then we'll call us quits um i got the latest data downloaded we got the uh cold front along the east coast we got a little bit of uh disturbance in texas and then we have looks like some onshore flow or some uh upper level upper elevation uh snowfall precipitation up in the northwest so this is we're going to build a surface chart real quick We'll put the surface pressure on, see where our pressure systems are. Typically, I like to put my uh, station data on here just so at first so we can try to determine where the, we know we're obviously by the radar where the significant weather is. But we look at the uh, surface plots, they plot into uh, different colors and we can see what is... Uh, where lower ceilings are or lower visibility and typically you'll have that where your precipitation is but sometimes you can get fog see like in over this high pro under this high pressure system through the midwest and then uh over here to the west we got looks like a lot of fog or mist and then a lot of lower ceilings or uh, mid-range ceilings here as far as uh, marginal VFR, which is ceilings are between a thousand and three thousand feet, so or visibility is between three and five miles. So it gives you an idea where the fog is, where the uh, lower ceilings are, and then um, how that's going to affect aircraft. But over the east coast, we definitely got our precipitation. Then we get into the red, that's IFR conditions, that's visibility's dropped um, below one to one mile or less or ceilings are uh, between a, uh, 500 and 1,000 feet. So typically once you get on the lee side of the mountains, that's where you'll get, or in the mountains, you'll get visibility dropping pretty low. And then uh, anywhere there's a heavier precipitation, and then like especially down here in Florida, we got ceilings that are less than 1,000 feet for sure. I can't see that number. Um, looks like 700 feet right along the panhandle along the gulf states so we got high pressure dominating the central united states the reason we got the lower visibility we got fog and mist we got the high pressure just capping the moisture is all the precipitation we just got moved through all that moisture is on the surface now the high pressure moved in capped it all off it can't create any mixing to dissipate the fog so you get lower visibilities in those areas and with the capping it uh, capping that moisture and hold it to the surface we can get lower ceilings also all right so in the northeast northwest we got a uh looks like some rain showers snow showers um looks like mostly snow in the upper elevations and then a little bit to the north so it looks like a low pressure system to the north maybe a clipper moving through high pressure dominates the central u.s in the southeast and then that the leading edge of that cold front we got that low pressure system that moved off. We got the cold front that's stretching down around this high pressure system. And it looks like we got some pretty significant uh, cold weather down there for Texas back in the um, upper 30s. 
so this data is probably within the next within the last hour or two old so um, they're pushing probably low 40s so here's some 50 there's a 43 so uh, 19 in the panhandle so it looks like uh, Texas getting that cold weather again so uh, hopefully they don't have uh, pipes freezing when you get into the 19 you get to 20 degrees that's where you get a hard freeze so you can get pipes freezing stuff like that and then um, or if you stay below 32 degrees for 24 hours which is not likely for Texas but when, if they get down below that 20 degree mark then they should start to uh, take precautions on the pipes freezing so we all seen what happened last year down there all right so let's throw the uh isotherms on here we're going to look at any thermal advection see what kind of uh well obviously if we have winds out of the northeast around the high pressure system we're going to have cold air advection on that side of the high we'll have that cold air advection and then be right behind that front is where our cold area is and then uh <clears throat> i throw celsius on here because fahrenheit tends to get too cluttered this is every two degrees celsius we go two degrees fahrenheit the, the thermal packing is even tighter than this so it just gets well, too overwhelmed to be able to read it so it looks like some weak thermal advection nothing nothing significant but we do have some pretty good winds for uh a tight pressure gradient um probably 10 to 20 knot winds in some of those areas and then one more thing we throw on here is our uh fronts this computer generated um maybe a forecaster and uh dncep puts this up but it's uh you got to reanalyze for these things like this front should stay pretty much close to being in in that trough it doesn't have to you can always have a post a prefrontal trough ahead of that front this has got a few low pressure systems along this front trying to develop along that i don't really see that happening just yet and then um, maybe that cold front just stretch it around this cold air mass because it's the separation between two air masses is what a cold front is if you have a high pressure low pressure and your isobars end right there then we got high pressure bridging in from the atlantic into a high pressure system over the united states then we should probably be more stationary through that area so let me get uh I didn't want to hang out this long, but here, let's just go through some stuff. I can pull, uh, start drawing on here for you. So if we can get an idea of what's going on, we'll just break down these systems, all the surface data right here. And then we can see, just get an idea of what's, what we're looking at. okay so hopefully you can see this we got a cold front i'm saying what should be right there in that trough i mean if you go stationary right here once you come out of that trough you have to go pretty much stationary there's no winds pushing where's our wind shift at um winds out of the northwest there's winds out of the south so you know unless this thing is not analyzing correctly for these isobars then we need to go kind of stationary for this cold front and for the frontal system um winds out of the northwest calm winds calm winds there's winds out of the south so we do have our wind shift maybe we can have a frontal system there now typically what you'll have is when you got a winds out of the northwest winds out of the southwest that's your shift for a cold front which that makes sense i mean just, i would say it almost makes sense for this system because because of our wind shift and our high pressure system the leading edge of this high is going to be a cold front we see the cold temperatures in texas so we'd say that high that cold front should wrap around that high so i'm kind of going with that um if we did anything different we would say we've got our high to the southeast high to the northwest and then if you had a cold front coming out of this and you had two high pressure systems pushing against each other if that this was ridging a little bit further then i would say these winds would be out of the southwest these winds would be out of the northeast now you could bring 
a stationary front through there and let me go ahead and complete that I know this is kind of messy and you're having basically with it being stationary is just weak thermal advection but separating that frontal system still separating the two high pressure systems so you have to have a stationary front now I don't agree with that right now just because we do have weak thermal advection that's true um, maybe this cold front let me get out of here race that wrapped around this high has stalled out because this high pressure is pushed to the south as far as it's going to go now it stalls out and becomes a stationary front so what we're going to look for is another pressure system to develop maybe a low to develop along that now this may be the case because we have some pretty low ceilings here cold air advection it's a very weak cold air advection from the north and then behind that cold front so as this high pressure pushes south stalls out becomes a stationary front now we can start looking for we have to go to the upper levels to, to see any upper level divergence see where our jet stream is if our cold fronts all the way down through here our jet streams right there then we can get speed divergence directional divergence in the upper levels and then we can get something develop along that uh, which most likely could happen let's go look at the forecast models and see if we have anything form along in the Gulf that's what we're gonna look for okay we do have thermal advection in the north let's just hit these systems real quick high pressure clear low pressure onshore flow around that high warm air advection we got the troughing in the north so maybe another little bit of a weak thermal uh, frontal system like maybe that warm front because we do have the warm warm air uh, warm air advection in that area just bringing the cold front back out of that low to the west so high pressure to the north cold air advection north of that which that pretty much makes sense ahead of this cold front bringing that precipitation that makes sense and then the warm air advection bringing uh, lower ceilings we see the red station plot there winds out of the south 20 knots tight pressure gradient that makes sense so we have this low pressure system to the north probably going to push to the east and be another clipper so the high pressure system over the west let's go look at for some development right here that's where we're going to focus on we know we got the high pressure this high high pressure is most likely either going to break off sit around there be a plateau high or it's just going to weaken and push to the east and then we got the low pressure push to the east with it and we'll have to see what happens with this next but i would say starting to make sense for a stationary front to develop right in this area along the gulf that low that uh frontal system wrapped around that high the highs only push so far south and then start to weaken maybe push to the northeast and then this ridge builds in or that's that frontal system begins to stall out let's go so let's go look at that pull up the models and let's go see got some precip in the south let's go looks like we got something developing there let's go we only got precipitation set right now let's go look at the uh, isobars now we have a low pressure system so that did that is what it looks like happens we have the frontal system 
stretch down to the golf and then it looks like a low pressure system develops along that stationary front there's a high pressure stalled out and then moves to the east over florida and get some maybe possibly some convection we'd have to go look at the convective models let's go to it's just convective for cape um i don't Possibly, I mean, it is. It's December, but hey, it's in Florida. We can. We got some pretty significant cape moving in that area. Let's go back to look at our values. Fourteen hundred. That ain't too bad. Um, possibly a uh, severe storm over Florida. Fifteen hundred. Definitely want to be over a thousand on the Cape. I would say that was pretty much all off the coast mostly. Little isolated areas down in there. What is that? Twelve hundred. So just still a possibility of severe weather over the right over northern Florida. So keep an eye on that. But let's go back to our surface where we were focused on here. precipitation sea level pressure precipitation there's our low all right so pretty heavy rains looks like some significant rainfall this is precipitation accumulation probably for maybe six hours or something i'm not sure what they're doing here on this just looks like precipitation but they typically when a model pulls precipitation it's not not all at once it's got to be a three to six hour uh precipitation accumulation on each chart so this is a three hour precip in inches all right so low pressure significant rainfall and then it looks like southern georgia off the coast of the carolinas until that low pressure system moves off but we were that's what we were looking at on them charts was that that frontal system pushing down into the gulf low pressure system developing along that stationary front and then pushes to the east and follows that front up all right, so let's look at one more system here that we were looking at to the north, and that was our clipper all the way up over north north of North Dakota, uh, troughing down into Montana, pushing that cold front back to the west. The warm front was kind of pushing south, and then that low, if you see that, that's just pushing on to the east as a clipper system over the uh, Great Lakes region. Then maybe some high pressure or another low following in behind that. So it looks like high pressure, then low pressure, and another clipper system. As that low pressure develops over the Gulf and shoots off to the East Coast, up the East Coast. All right, so let's get breaks down real quick go back to our front this is where we are right now this is a six hour forecast 21 Z today uh, 1600 local time Eastern low pressure developing over the Gulf for Monday To about 1500 local it's three o'clock local and then let's go to florida looks like rain starting over the panhandle and over florida this is december 21st 06z one o'clock in the morning so tuesday december 21st looks like you get all the precip in the gulf states across the right across the panhandle of florida and even a little strip shooting down into southern florida into miami and then up into alabama this is still tuesday going into wednesday so tuesday night wednesday morning and still looks like some areas of precipitation into wednesday for alabama and georgia and then that low pressure system shoots off the coast 
and looks like it kind of skims the Carolinas at uh, about 7 o'clock in the evening on Thursday. Actually, on Wednesday. Zero Z for Thursday. And then it looks like some uh, precipitation in the mountains over in the west coast. This is pretty far out. This is next Friday, the 24th. So the only thing I'd be counting on right now would be all this rainfall in the southern states with that low pressure system developing. Just because that made sense on our charts. With that frontal system we have all that precipitation to off the east coast and then the high pressure bringing those cold temperatures down into texas so we do have some offshore flow over texas so i would say a stationary front stretching back that's what's pretty much causing wrapping around this high uh causing that lift for the instability in southern texas right now all right so that's pretty much the chart we didn't go into the upper levels um we just want to look at the models so all right i'm going to end this video it's been going on for long enough and uh i want to say thanks for watching if you guys like what you see share this things help uh subscribe and i'll keep them coming so uh thanks for watching have a good day